And a lot of people in the keto space are making these desserts. My wife is guilty of making these cookie doughs and things like that. And I find myself, I can overdo these like left and right, right? So I, we try to minimize them, but she'll put in non-nutritive sweeteners, stevia, erythritol, uh, monk fruits, uh, what's the other one, allulose, right? So these are theoretically not affecting glycemic levels, but the brain still does sense this cephalic phase of sweetness. And maybe there is a small cephalic insulin response, things like that. Um, how do you feel about non-nutritive sweeteners paired with fat? I think non-nutritive sweeteners are fine in a zero calorie product. Like I'm, I'm literally not afraid of artificial sweeteners. I'm not afraid of erythritol, stevia. I'm really not even that afraid of sucralose or aspartame, but, um, I like these in a zero calorie product, like a diet soda, right? So if, if you, we have studies suggesting that diet soda is better than water if you're overweight and trying to lose weight. And I don't know, that might actually satisfy some sort of sweet craving that people have for no calories at all. And, you know, like erythritol and stevia, these are fairly clean. They have an insulin load of zero. They have a glycemic load of zero. But I think that when you pair them with something that has calories, you're probably going to overeat it because it's just tastier. And then I think it might start to be a problem. I mean, your almond flour, keto snacks, you know, with a uh, horrifically low protein energy ratio, when you make that sweet, you're probably going to eat even more of it. And then it's just, I don't think it's optimal. Mm -hmm. It's easy to overdo it. It's easy to overdo it. Yeah. So if you're going to do that, maybe add collagen or whey protein or something like that, or practice mindful eating strategies to say, I'm only going to eat this one. Like don't, that's what I do. I'll put it on a plate. Cause if I'm standing in front of the freezer or the refrigerator, I'll have three or four or whatever, right? Just mindlessly. So I think, you know, sometimes we need to implement some of these like behavioral science strategies to, like you said, you, you don't get nuts very often. Cause you know, if you have them, you're going to overdo them. Right. Right. So anyway. Yeah, it's, absolutely. And I cheat all the time. You know, a couple of times a week, I will, I might eat something that's just abject garbage, but I'm very intentional and very mindful and it has to be something really good and it has to be something special and it has to be maybe a social occasion and I'm just buying one and I'm not bringing it home with me and that sort of thing. And to be honest, I might be just as likely to cheat with something that's carbs as I would with a keto fied version just because to me the protein to energy ratio is so low that it's kind of a cheat either way so well and you start this in the book you start out with the 80 20 principle you know to look at diet but also maybe apply this to your life because i, I feel like correct me if, if if you notice this in your practice but i feel like the clients that i've worked with mainly women want to be and this is not a dog on women at all but they want to be very precise about exactly how many grams of protein or fat and how much cardio and how much weightlifting and very precise about their feeding fasting patterns and i like this idea of this 80 20 principle like be clean 80 percent of the time but on a friday night saturday night especially if it's in a social situation or whatever if you break the rules a little bit, like you're probably going to be okay. You know, you don't have to be, you know, perfect all the time. There's some feeding studies or diet studies that have looked at like taking the weekends off. And if you look at compared to continuous energy restriction, those people, there's like the same fat loss outcomes, right? So there's this being a little bit flexible, I think is okay. And you know, what you talk about that in the book a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree with that. I think you want to be you know, clean 80% of the time and then cheat on top of that uh, episodically. And I think that works really well. I think that's probably mimicking uh, the way humans got food in their environment. And so I think that's a really sustainable attitude. And I, I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. 